Good evening, everybody. I welcome you all for today's webinar. I am Kamala Gunawadana, a fellow representative of the ISL Council for this year, and I'm chairing this knowledge sharing subcommittee of Civil Engineering Sectional Committee. As a highway consultant for many years in the construction industry, I am honored to join this webinar and give away this in, in, initiating speech to open it. Before I start the today's program, I request you all to mute your microphones because always it's otherwise disturbing, except you need to ask any question from the speaker when he, when he permits. I will brief you what are our schedule from Civil Engineer Sectional Committee. Basically, we are organizing technical programs on every uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Tuesdays are exclusively reserved for series of lectures from about the medium price building designs and constructions by Professor Jai Singh. We started this program uh, in last uh, last end of December. And we have done away with this uh, five programs so far. Also, we have covered one initiate lecture about overview of this historic civil engineering in Sri Lanka. Wednesdays are planned to arrange non-technical presentations, and we have done it four presentations uh, up to now. Our main focus on Wednesdays are to organize member development programs and some public awareness programs. We are civil engineering experts. First, can they can they can share their knowledge, so with the public and our membership as well. So Thursdays, like today, we are reserved for this day for multidisciplinary technical presentations, and many professionals are identified as resource persons by now. We have done with three programs up to now. That's that's a quick briefing about what we have done. These are the major programs. We have done some other programs from CESC. From these programs, actually, what we, we, can, we can gain some knowledge and we can develop our instincts and we can develop our insights and also our professionalisms while achieving our day-to-day -day life in a better way. About the today's webinar, we are planning to conduct series of webinars different, in different major areas about the expressways and highways to share our expertise knowledge related to these areas in, uh, in coming, coming uh, weeks. This is the first webinar here today about the design and construction technologies used in Central Expressway Project Section 2. Uh, actually, this project was remarkably cherished by almost every citizen in the country. The main specialties are here. The project was fully accomplished with local resources, including financing, designing, reviewing, construction, construction supervision, project management, and with everything. Now I will introduce our eminent resource person today. He's engineer Sail Suman Singer, who was the consulting structural bridge engineer for Central Expressway Section 2. He's a product from University of Moratua, graduated in 2004. Also, he has obtained his master from Griffith University, Brisbane. Uh, he is an OSA scholar and received academic excellence for his master studies in Griffith, Australia. Is a member of the Institution of Civil Engineers UK, uh, Institution of Engineers Sri Lanka, ISL, and Society of Structural Engineers in Sri Lanka. Also, he is serving as a panel member for this uh, professional review examinations of ISL. Engineer ISL has more than 17 years of experience in structural design and has worked in infrastructure projects funded by various international funding agencies like ADB, World Bank, JICA. His expertise is directly associated 
with design of structures in expressways and highways, including major structures such as viaducts, bridges, overpasses, underpasses, poor structures, including skirters, composite concrete, steel concrete, composite structures, poor structures, and so on. Before I hand over to our presenter, I, I, I have to appreciate the guidance given by Professor Jai Singer, Chairman CAC, and our Secretary Subcommittee Chairman, Injiri Manjula, for the keen interest they have taken to make these programs success. This has become a reality, definitely, with the assistance of the subcommittees and subcommittee leaders. Yes, we are now to start the today's event right now. And I will, without further ado, I invite Engineer Sela Suman Singer to take over. Please enjoy this evening. Thank you so much for the, uh, have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Kamala Gunawadana uh, for kind in, uh, introduction of me. Uh, and thank you very much to the uh, Civil Engineers Exceptional Committee of uh, Institution of Civil Institution of Engineers Sri Lanka (ISL) uh, to providing this providing uh, this opportunity to present what we have done in the Central Expressway Project Section Two. Uh, and I have to thank uh, Professor Jai Singer. Uh, and the Secretary, Mr. Engineer Manjula, uh, Mr. Engineer Manjula, uh, making these uh, uh, presentations reality. So, uh, uh, with that, I have to uh, welcome you all uh, spending this beautiful evening with me uh, to have a knowledge of gain something on what we have done, uh, the newest addition to the Expressway Network of Sri Lanka, the Central Expressway Project Section 2, that is Mirgamu to Kurunayaga. So, uh, this is uh, uh, Central Expressway uh, Project Section 2, uh, and this is uh, owned by the road Road Development Authority of Sri Lanka, and uh, this project was managed by the Road Development Authority of Sri Lanka. So uh, the Central Express Rail project uh, is a, a long, uh, very consists of four four long sections. Uh, uh, if you if you if you uh, familiar with the our expressway network, we can see that we do have a Patnaik Expressway, Outer Circle Expressway, and uh, now uh, the, the Ruanpur Expressway is on uh, uh, is, is also in, under the construction. And uh, uh, Central Expressway is starting from Kadavatu to, uh, uh, it goes up to Dambulla, it's origin plant to Dambulla, and from the Pothwara, it goes to the uh, Dalagedara. So this, Central Expressway is consists of four sections. The first section is from Kadavatu to Mirigama. Uh, that is also is under construct, construction. Uh, and section two, that is what we talk about today. Uh, this is from Mirigama to Kurunagala. And uh, from Kurunagala to, uh, sorry, so from uh, in, 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 in section two, uh, there is a system interchange uh, Potuhara. From then Potuhara to uh, Galagadara, the section three start. And section four is about uh, from Potuhara to, uh, from Kurunagala to Dambul. So, uh, uh, this is a summary of uh, the, our Central Expressway project, uh, the section one. Kadavatur Mirigama, which is funded by Chinese Exim Bank, and the uh, Chinese contractors are uh, constructing right now. Uh, it's a 37 kilometers long. And the section two, which we have completed uh, in recently, it is Mirigama to Kurunayagala, 
This is funded by local banks and uh, it is 40 kilometers long. And section three, Potuhara uh, to Galagedera, it is uh, 34 kilometers long. Right now, presently, uh, this is uh, directly supervised by our RDA uh, and construction is uh, commenced from Potuhara to uh, Rambukkana. The remaining part is uh, remaining part from uh, Rambukkana to Galagedera is also to be uh, constructed, but still the funding has not been finalized. Uh, section four, uh, that is uh, Kurunagal to Dambulla, uh, uh, this is also uh, not, uh, funds are not finalized, uh, but the, uh, some uh, project management unit has been uh, established. Uh, uh, however, still the uh, funds are not uh, uh, finalized or uh, decided. This is a very long stretch. This is a 60 kilometers long expressway uh, stretch. So uh, we, we, we are going to talk about the section two uh, uh, from Mirigama to Kurunagala. Uh, this package, this section was divided into four packages and each contract packages was uh, awarded to uh, consortium. This, this consortium is a uh, consists of local leading contractors, uh, about three or four leading contractors form a consortium, uh, and uh, this one package was awarded to these consortiums. Now this is a, a new new approach adopted by RDA uh, to enhance the capacities of the local con contractors uh, and to uh, again give them some recognition on uh, expressway construction and the supervision consultancy that was also uh, uh, done by the uh, local experts uh, and uh, this was a this was also a consortium and lead by the mg consultants so we started the construction work in january 2017 uh, now I want to introduce uh, what are these consortium means. Uh, so package A, uh, that is from Miragam to Rilawa, uh, it was a consortium of ICC Access, uh, Navaloka and KDE Virasini, KDE, but, and that's from the J, uh, JV4 uh, package A. And uh, uh, package B, uh, it was Sierra Olympus Sudavis TEC consortium, uh, but in the latter part, this was uh, uh, had uh, some uh, issues, and we uh, it was completed by with Tudavia and CEC. Uh, then package C, uh, package C is a 5.5 kilometers long stretch. Uh, it is a KDA Virasinghe name and Edward and Christie joint venture. Uh, package D, uh, that is uh, also MAGA CMLMTT VVK Hoval JV. Uh, this is uh, uh, 8.5 kilometers long. Uh, so if you see this uh, name of the contractors, you are very much familiar with all these names. These are leading local contractors. Uh, so uh, that's why this is uh, considered as a uh, constructed by local contractors with local uh, consultants firms with local funding. Uh, again, this is a uh, this is a, uh, a graphical explanation of package A, package B, package C, and package D. Uh, if we go to the details of this package or each packages. Uh, you can see in this uh, project overview slide, uh, package is a 9.7 kilometers long stretch, uh, and it is a 34 billion uh, project. Uh, and it uh, package include a one interchange uh, that is Mirigama, uh, and uh, package B. Uh, package B is a 10.2 kilometers long stretch. And uh, it is also 34.5 billion work, uh, and it has a one uh, one interchange, which is we call Nakalagamu interchange. The package C, uh, package C is also a 10.88 kilometers long stretch, and uh, this is a 32 billion work, and uh, KDNM 
Edward and Chris consortium uh, completed this work, and it uh, uh, in this in this stretch there is a popular interchange, but that was completed by the package D consortium. Uh, basically, Margal uh, Margal led the uh, work. And for package D, uh, package D, we do have uh, 8.5 kilometers long stretch. It is 36.27 billion, uh, 36.2 billion work, and uh, it has uh, three interchanges: Damboka, Kurunagala, uh, and Yagahapitiya, which was early it was called Pala Gat One, and now it's called Yagahapitiya. Uh, and uh, altogether, four interchanges were completed by the package D. Uh, so, uh, as always in highway and expressway uh, construction, the project management uh, is uh, from the uh, road development authority, which has a very uh, seasoned, good project engineers and uh, project directors, and uh, leaded by a well uh, established designs uh, and uh, procurement units. And uh, the local consultancy uh, consisted of uh, uh, several local uh, consultants firms uh, which is led by the mg consultants uh, other than the mg consultants uh, it has a partners with rdc ccb ecl cea wintech and oceana as well so all these are local companies and uh, uh, local uh, uh, engineers work for them. Uh, and when we go to the interchanges, uh, we do have uh, six interchanges, as I explained earlier, uh, for medium interchange, where this start, uh, where this section to start is uh, medium interchange, uh, it connects uh, connects to the Colombo Candy Road uh, via Pasyal Giriwula Road. Uh, and then there is a Nakalagamu. Uh, this Nakalagamu uh, is mainly exit for or entrance from the Narambala uh, and Dambok. Dambok interchange is before the Kurunagala town. We, you can take uh, uh, exit before the uh, to the Dambok interchange or in, get the entrance from there. Uh, then there is a Potuhara system interchange. Why do we call system interchange? There is no exit or entry point on this one. This is basically for con uh, connecting two, uh, two expressways. Uh, if you see now from Potuhara to Galagadra, we do have a section three uh, expressway. And uh, uh, now when you, uh, for me, to Mirikamutukurunagala expressway is there. So these two expressways are connected at Potuhara. Uh, at this point, there is no any exit to entry point, just just a connection of two uh, ex uh, expressways. So that we call it is a system interchange. Then Kurunagala, we do have Kurunagala interchange where you can uh, uh, enter the Kurunagala town via uh, uh, Kurunagala Katugastura uh, road. Uh, and finally, we do have a Yagahapitiya. Uh, this is not a complete uh, interchange, it's a, a fully, uh, uh, full exit entrance, but still it's a, uh, right now functioning as a uh, exit entry point because the section four, we are uh, from uh, this uh, Kurunagal to Dambali has not been completed yet. So this, uh, this Yagha, Yaghabiti interchange serves for entrance to Kurunagala Dambulla Road. Now, uh, this, this, this explains more. Uh, uh, this explains more. Uh, the, this medium interchange, uh, uh, if you can see my cursor, uh, uh, you can see the Pasyala Girula Road. Uh, from here, you, you can enter the medium interchange. Uh, this is the start of uh, section two, and uh, you can travel towards Kurunagala. Then, uh, uh, towards Kadavata, uh, there is a half completed. Uh, uh, this is connected with the section one. Uh, once it's section one is completed, this is connected.
so this is not going to interchange uh, this is constructed by package b uh, con contractors uh, 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 this is con uh, constructed by uh, package b construction uh, contractors and uh, you can see that uh, this is a exit or entrance point to the nara mala side we are uh, allow a uh, dump palace uh, road and uh, uh, it comes from Kadota uh, site I mean I mean Miriam site and travels towards Kurunagar. It's a complete full interchange. Uh, then we do have a Potuera interchange, Potuera system interchange. As I said, uh, this is a, a connection of two expressway to each other. Uh, now, right now, uh, earlier this was uh, all this system interchange was to be constructed with section three uh, package, but uh, during the during the uh, section two, which is started earlier and halfway completed. During this time, the part of the system interchange was awarded to uh, section two, uh, so that we completed uh, half of the uh, uh, system interchange, uh, which we uh, have already completed uh, this ramp and uh, uh, this ramp, and that is we call ramp A and ramp D. Uh, and you can see this is a very skewed this. Uh, this uh these sections include with very high high skew bridges as well so this is another view of that uh, system interchange then we do have the uh, dumbok interchange uh, with the dumbok interchange you can uh, uh, exit uh, from the expressway before the kurunagala town or, or you can enter from the dumbok side to this expressway and travel both ways or Colombo or uh, uh, Kurunagala side. Now, now this is Kurunagala interchange and again this is connected to uh, Kurunagala Katugastata road and from that side you can enter exit to this uh, expressway. Then uh, we complete our section at this location Yagahapitya interchange. If you can see that this is uh, this part is uh, uh, we have completed up to this section and remaining section has to be constructed by the section 4 package which uh, which is uh, regarded as Kurunagala to Dambuya. So from here right now you can uh, uh, exit and uh, get entered to the our this expressway uh, once this uh, full complete packages have been constructed this has to be this part has to be modified now uh, when it comes to design responsibilities of this package uh, all the geometric designs have been completed by the uh, employer rda uh, however during the construction based on the uh, site conditions and the survey details this has been uh, reviewed uh, uh, and uh, ad adapted as necessary uh, uh, with the consent of RDA. Uh, for the structural design, for the old initial end uh, uh, works and all those stuff, uh, preliminary designs have been completed by the RDA. Then uh, detailed designs of the structures has been done by the contractor using uh, uh, design subconsultants uh, and the review and approval was provided by the engineer. Uh, and for the geotechnical and payment designs also uh, uh, that has been done by the contractor and reviewed by the engineer. Then there are some other designs, toll building uh, and other facilities. Uh, uh, this is uh, this also designed by RDA to a uh, third party architect uh, and uh, contractor was supposed to submit the all the working drawings and oh, this is also reviewed by the engineer and all the other road lighting and traffic and late marking also uh, this was designed by rda and uh, 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 
and the, uh, and contractor was supposed to do the uh, working drawings and uh, reviewed by the engineer. Uh, then traffic signals uh, that was uh, awarded to a specialized subcontractor uh, with a review and approvals from engineer. Uh, guardrails, uh, ROW fence, and other miscellaneous items. This is a RDA design, preliminary design by RDA. Uh, and as other works, uh, contractor submitted the working drawings and uh, engineer reviewed the work. Uh, now, this uh, uh, road, our expressway consists of four lanes. Uh, one lane is a, a 3.6 uh, meter wide, and there's a center median, uh, and there's a uh, uh, crash barriers uh, in both sides. Now, this is an illustration of how our uh, embankment and wire duct sections are uh, uh, distributed. Uh, all these uh, blue colors are representing the uh, wide duct sections or bridge sections. Uh, so you can see that uh, there is a very long section of wide duct. This is a 2.2 kilometers long wide duct. And this is the most uh, longest wide duct section in, in this project. This consists of uh, 76 spans of uh, 30 meter. 76 uh, spans uh, with 30 meter uh, 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 girders. Now I will give you some brief explanation of uh, the structural works of this uh, section two. Uh, as I said, preliminary designs were done by the employer RDA. Later, the contractor uh, supposed to do the detailed designs uh, uh, with their design uh, subcontractors uh, based on the uh, RDA uh, design manuals and the specification. So the code of practices we adopted for this uh, project was BS5400. And that is the, we adopted the latest, uh, latest uh, version of BS5400, that is 2006. Uh, so uh, if you're familiar with the BS5400, uh, there is a, 78 version and a 2006 version. Uh, 78 version is having a less uh, lesser traffic loads. Uh, 2006 are much higher. So we adapted BS5400 which much higher uh, traffic load. Uh, all these detailed designs were carried out using uh, uh, state-of-the-art softwares like CSI Bridge, Mida Civil, SEP2000, Stratpro, and for pile and pilot uh, and many other uh, small softwares also used for our analysis. Uh, the concrete grade, we use concrete grade G30, G4, grade 40 and grade 50. Uh, and uh, one thing I have to uh, elaborate is we use the C-sand as well. So if we, uh, we have uh, uh, reduced the uh, environmental impact on the uh, uh, because if you see very large sand demand is there. So uh, based on the specification and uh, based on the guidelines provided by the uh, various uh, government organizations, we adapted the sea sand for our construction as well. So this will reduce the cost. In future, I think uh, our construction industry has to uh, uh, see the prospect of using sea sand because there is a huge demand for the river sand and it impacts to our environment as well. So project cost also will be lowered when these kind of uh, new methodologies are used. Uh, and there was a design subcontractor for each package. And as I said earlier, the review and approval for all these designs were provided by the engineer. Then uh, in this project, uh, there are 11 casting yards and 16 concrete batting plants. And there were some 11 piling subcontractors. And uh, in, the, in this project, nine girder launchers were used to launch the girders. So uh, 
uh, I'm sure most of you are well aware of what, what, what the technical terms I'm using here. So we are we have viaducts that we 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 did have uh, 36 viaduct total length to 10.4 kilometers long. Uh, now we call the now the, these are called viaducts, uh, which is uh, mainly there is no river path or water flow, uh, but uh, to allow the uh, uh, during the high flood seasons uh, to allow the free flow of the uh, hydrology patterns, we do construct the viaduct and uh, we do have such a viaducts uh, 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 lengthening length uh, uh, near, near in total length near into 10.4 kilometers and uh, uh, we do have uh, bridges we do did have 12 bridges uh, either single or uh, multi span bridges then there are some underpasses uh, underpasses is to uh, expressway uh, travels uh, Underneath the underneath the expressway, uh, normal traffic uh, road traffic to be passed. We provide underpasses. Uh, we do had a we had a twenty eight underpasses. Uh, you know, these are these are maybe bridge underpasses or a box underpasses. Then we did have uh, eight overpasses. Uh, Yeah, uh, there are some questions raising up. Uh, uh, I, I will answer all these questions at the uh, end of my end of my presentation. Uh, so uh, I hope that we'll be fine with you. Uh, and uh, we do have eight overpasses, and we do have more than hundred box culverts. Uh, these were considered of single, twin, and multi-cell box culverts. And we did have tall buildings as well. So these are viaducts. This is a completed viaduct. Uh, uh, and the, uh, in the uh, right hand side, you can see viaducts is under construction. And uh, uh, this is uh, uh, passed into a uh, railway line. And uh, uh, in the left hand side there is no any such a barrier but it's uh, uh, allowing a free flow of the high flood level yeah uh, free, free free flow of the water during the high flood high, high flood seasons uh, then we do have overpass bridges uh, we do had uh, uh, some uh, uh, eight to nine overpass bridges and uh, these are the uh, means of uh, these uh, overpass bridges uh, then we did have a bridges. Uh, this is uh, one bridge uh, over Mahawaya, uh, one of the uh, large bridges we had, and we first one to complete it, uh, 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 and it was constructed by the package uh, ICC did the work. Uh, and these are underpasses. Uh, we did have bridge underpasses, as we do have uh, box underpasses as well. Uh, uh, so in the left hand side, uh, this is a bridge underpasses, but this is under construction. This photo is during the under construction, and the, the beams girders are not placed here. Uh, then we do have ramp bridges. Uh, in the interchanges, uh, we have constructed ramp bridges. The difficulty in ramp bridges is uh, these we, we do have high curves, uh, large, very cur curvy bridges. And to provide these curves, it is very difficult. To, to, we have to place the girders uh, in certain way, and uh, we do have to go by small spans as well to uh, provide these uh, uh, curves. Uh, then our superstructure, uh, we did have precess concrete post tension girders. Uh, we had a 15 meter, 20 meter, 25, 30, and 35 meter long PSC girders, uh, all post tensions. Uh, and uh, we did grade 40 or grade 50, uh, sorry, grade 50 concrete for girders. And for the deck, we, uh, we did use grade 40. Uh, so we did have uh, five to five or six span continuation. Uh, I mean, uh, that means there is no expansion joint for five to six span uh, intervals uh, to provide the comfort uh, riding. Uh, however, 
uh, this was uh, limited to five or six bands. And uh, in technically, we, we our continuation, we got the continuation uh, by the Goethe continuation, uh, or we got the continuation from the deck, which we call link step. I will explain the, the stuff later. Uh, yeah, this is the uh, slides of explaining the girder continuation. In the top top slide, uh, top picture, you can see that the two girders are placed, and that these two girders girders are continued by this top post tension. So once the uh, two girders are placed uh, on top of the bridge, uh, this uh, second uh, post tension has to be carried out uh, uh, from the top. Uh, then uh, the next kind of uh, deck continuity was achieved by the slab. Uh, that is also, again, we do have to place the guard bridges. Then we, we, uh, we put the reinforcements and uh, provide the continuity. And uh, Again, uh, now this is a uh, uh, cross section of the bridge, uh, uh, bridge deck. And if you see, uh, there we have uh, uh, two types of uh, decks as well. Now, if you see the uh, this picture, there's a this. Uh, if, you, if you see the hatch, there's a five girders, five girders here. Here, the girders have link with the uh, slab. This is 200 millimeter slab. You can see this 200. This is 200 millimeter slab is there. So once the girder is placed, we put the, this 200 millimeter slab. Uh, so this is the first uh, uh, concreting after the decking that is we call composite composition. Then after uh, after that, we do have another 100 millimeter slab in top of this uh, uh, girders. So that, that is the uh, second uh, second uh, concreting on the deck. So uh, you see the pictures how we did that is 200 millimeter decking using the underneath uh, formwork, and how the how we retain this formwork is by putting this kind of bars and uh, putting the thread threads. Uh, uh, Shown as shown in the picture. Uh, then we do had uh, another kind of uh, decks uh, here in the here on the girders are placed, and in between that uh, permanent permanent formwork, cast permanent formwork uh, with the concrete uh, is, uh, is is placed. Then we do put a two hundred millimeter slab on top of that one. So here. Uh, uh, composition, composite action is happening at, at once, uh, only one time. Here, the only 200 millimeter deck slab and the girder is composite each other. Uh, and this, this, uh, this uh, small uh, 100 millimeter slab acting as a uh, temporary formwork to the bridge. Uh, te not temporary, it's a permanent uh, formwork to the bridge. So in, you can see this in the picture underneath that this uh, permanent concrete uh, formwork is there. Then uh, I will, uh, since I have explained the uh, little bit of uh, 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 about the viaducts, I will go to the Pothwell system engine designs. Uh, how we uh, to give us some glimpse of our design process. So for all our designs, we did have a global analysis uh, uh, done with the finite element modeling. Uh, for this finite element model, uh, to build a finite element, we did CSI bridge, either SAP or MIDAS. Uh, uh, basically, th these three softwares were used. Uh, and since we do have a traffic loading involved in these bridges, uh, CSI bridge or Midas civil was used to uh, automatic run of the uh, traffic uh, loading. 
So you see the ramp A and D designs uh, global models uh, of the uh, bridges. So uh, to account the, all these traffic loads, and uh, we do have other loadings such as thermal, wind, uh, shrinkage, and creep. And since uh, uh, we do have to uh, evaluate the eigen stresses of the girders, since you have to have a differential temperature, and uh, we would have different grades of concrete, so and uh, different time of placing, so we have a differential shrinkage. And uh, we uh, allow some settlement effects also uh, countered uh, as a safe site uh, during our design process. Uh, and as I said, our girders had uh, uh, some girders had uh, two two types of composition. Uh, that is uh, casting of two hundred millimeter slab, and after that casting of hundred millimeter slab. So uh, all these construction stages were uh, incorporated in the design. Now, if you see the first picture, uh, we you can see that uh, piers substructure has been uh, done. Then uh, girder is placed on top of that. Then uh, then in, in this picture, the diaphragm has been casted. Uh, then uh, after final uh, 100 millimeter slab is casted. So all these. Uh, mm, Construction stages were uh, uh, analyzed and effects were uh, evaluated. Since this is a very highly skewed bridge, and now uh, if, you, if, if you can remember, I said this is a very highly skewed bridges at Pothwara system interchange, amounting about 60 degrees. Uh, I think that's the, more, uh, the highest skewed bridge uh, uh, in road network in Sri Lanka. Uh, so uh, it has to. Uh, analyze properly to all these uh, effects otherwise there will be some issues during the service uh, maybe uh, uh, displacement of bearings or cracking the top slabs uh, to avoid all those stuff we had a very rigorous analysis process uh, for these uh, staff uh, bridges uh, once we uh, uh, did the uh, global analysis uh, we identify the, all the load effects uh, for the uh, each substructure. We did a very uh, local analysis for each substructure. Uh, so uh, some most of the time we had a separate model for substructure, and uh, this is a one pier structure with a spread footing, uh, and uh, all the loads from the superstructure was uh, assigned to these models, and the structural effects were. Uh, evaluated uh, for casting all these girders. We did have a eleven casting girder casting yards. So one thing was uh, one good thing was happening in this uh, project was uh, most of our local contractors were, uh, were get used to the uh, uh, construction work of post tension pre casting uh, girders. Earlier, we, we our contractors had some uh, experience with casting of these girders, but not in this scale. If you see, uh, they have to manage uh, uh, girder casting yards uh, to complete management of the girder casting yard and the uh, dispatching of all these beams. Uh, this, is a, uh, this is a very uh, rigorous uh, uh, work and had to be had to be planned well if you see now there are uh, thousand of gardens are casted this has to be casted in a such a way that uh, uh, you have to dispatch the uh, girders uh, in a way that uh, you have to uh, keep, keep producing the new girders now each these girders are different to each other because uh, if you see the uh, girders we, we do have in a different uh, alignment so that uh, girders are not similar. Either, firstly, girders are different with different spans, and even with the same span, the girders are different based on the each bridge. So that you have to cast cast your girders uh, in a certain way that uh, whereas the uh, construction work work of substructure completes, 
as 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 long as you complete the substructure you have to uh, launch the girders so this is a full full maneuvering of work and uh, this kind of uh, this scale of work has not previously done uh, by our contractors uh, so they had a full exposure exposure to the uh, the, the casting yard facilities and uh, the planning work of the same and all, all other than that the all the post tension works also carried out by the local contractors so earlier our contractors used to do part work, part part work but with this work they were fully uh, uh, fully exposed to the, this kind of uh, large scale post tension work and gain the valuable experience i think now they can do uh, uh, very confidently undertake any work of this kind of large scale work and uh, there's a very good thing happen in this by this project and uh, if you see the uh, 30 meter girder casting reinforcement you, uh, you can see that there's an end block end block like this it is a very heavy reinforcement due to high stresses and uh, uh, then the tender ducts are there tender ducts are there you have to place on those stuff and uh, you have to have lifting hooks to lift the girders and if you see this uh, drawing if you see that there is a uh, vertical increment is there so our girders are different each one one to one i mean there's not any any similar girders so you have to uh, 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 Pass this protrude the regulating block uh, in a certain way that it uh, suitable to the alignment of the uh, road. Then the pre-stressing works also done by the local contractors, and uh, there were two types of uh, post tension work and uh, the major post tension work during uh, in the ground and in the uh, as I said there is a girder continuation from the top. That has to be done once the girders has been placed at the bridges. So the top post tension was done after placing the girders. Now in the first picture, you will see the uh, smaller, smaller uh, uh, machine of stressing, and that is for the top post tension. So uh, all the safety precautions were taken during the post tension work and. Uh, uh, this is one, another good example of how these uh, uh, barriers have been provided for as a safety uh, and carrying out the post tensioning work. Uh, for the expansion, uh, in the bridge expansion joint, uh, we did have, there are several types of expansion joints in bridges, uh, mainly uh, st strip type, but here we did use the reinforced elastomeric type. Uh, expansion joint and uh, we did have uh, based on the spans and the loadings uh, uh, we calculate the expansion needed expand uh, the width of the expansion joint uh, it was amount to 60, 60 millimeters 90 150 and 180 So uh, so elastomeric uh, uh, elastomeric reinforced expansion joint, joints were done. Uh, here also uh, we did the uh, now good thing was what we have done is we did the complete uh, complete accessories. We installed these all these uh, expansion joint is complete accessories. If you see, all these nut and bowls, it's a not a uh, ad hocly chosen that is comes as a uh, unit uh, from, from the expansion joint providers so that uh, the durability of these uh, expansion joints have been uh, 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 protected. Then uh, uh, this is another example of how we have done the expansion joints. Uh, uh, we have continued the expansion joints to uh, uh, the, uh, the crash barrier, parapet, concrete parapet poles. 
and uh, we have provided the uh, 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 all these uh, water flowing uh, uh, component to the our expansion joints as well. Uh, for the bearings, uh, we did use the elast elastomeric bearings, laminated elast elastomeric bearings. What the uh, what what do you mean by laminated elastomeric? Is there are uh, steel plates underneath embedded in the uh, rubber steel bearings, and uh, this bearing has to uh, serve the compressive uh, forces of the girders and the shear strain and the rotational strain. So uh, our girders were tested. Oh, for all these uh, all these uh, actions, and with us uh, in the laboratories, uh, uh, we do have in Sri Lanka. We do, do not have all the facilities to take the bearing pads. Only the compression compression uh, uh, forces can be uh, can be compression strains. Compressive strain can be only checked in Sri Lanka. Uh, however, uh, we did. Uh, uh, laboratory facilities in Malaysia. So we did uh, all these tests in Malaysia and uh, our bearings were tested uh, in those laboratories. Then uh, the surface drainage, uh, we, we, we provided the surface drainage to our viaducts and the bridges in a such a way that uh, 10 years retailing period uh, uh, and the rainfall intensity of uh, with the updated ID, IDF curves uh, and we manage, we specifically maintain that water film thicknesses is in acceptable limits. Otherwise, uh, uh, you know that uh, skidding can happen with the high speed of the vehicle. Uh, after explaining the, all the superstructure works, now I'm going to uh, explain you something about the substructures, uh, what we have done. The, so, which substructure is means whatever the component uh, below the uh, bearing pads, uh, bearing levels. Uh, so, uh, for the abutments, uh, we do have the con conventional cantilever types uh, wall abutments. Uh, then, uh, we when the when the height is uh, very high. Uh, you can't provide a just can RC cantilever walls. For that one, we adapted buttress cantilever type uh, walls. In this picture, you will see the buttress type uh, uh, abutment wall. And uh, uh, when the abutment height is very high, and there is no any hydrological issues. In such an instance, we, we went for a spill through types abutments. Uh, so this spill through types is not suitable for when there is a very high, a high level of covering anticipated during the high flat level. But there are certain places where viaduct is places, place where the hydrology, hydrology or uh, covering effects are not high, we adapted spill through types adapted, uh, abutments. The, all the foundation types were pile or spread foot in type. Uh, and the most of the wing walls, wing walls are there to protect the embankment, uh, embankment of the uh, adjacent uh, bridge, uh, bridge adjacent. So these cantilever wing walls were provided either cantilever. Uh, most of the substructures were grade 30, and we have taken all the precautions to provide against this covering. And this is another illustration of a spill through uh, abutments. Uh, and you can see the construction construction during the construction uh, how it uh, stands like uh, for the abutment uh, we did have a very stringent uh, precautions to uh, prevent the scouring and this is another illustration of uh, uh, we providing the gabion mattresses uh, to provide the rich abutments and uh, then we did have a pier section. Uh, uh, you can see that we do our more um, regularly used pier types is uh, two column piers. Uh, and I have to elaborate that this is the most economical use of concrete. Now, if you see some other projects, uh, you do have a very large walls. Uh, 
uh, with a uh, great quantities of concrete. Now, if you see these our 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 tier types, uh, we do have only two columns, uh, so that uh, uh, large quantities of concrete have been uh, saved, and uh, we have used uh, two columns. Hello. Yeah. So we did have a uh, two two column two column peer, uh, peer types and three column peer types and even a single column type spheres uh, in our uh, project. So all these uh, peers has to be uh, resisted for biaxial bending moments and axial for forces. As I sa said, uh, these are optimized structural sections. Uh, even for our, uh, now this is a typical uh, arrangement of uh, our peer structure. Which consists of two two columns, uh, and uh, it is uh, rested on a two uh, two large diameter thousand eight hundred diameter piles, and connected by a tie beam. Uh, so this is a typical arrangement of our pier section used in uh, our viaducts in our project. And uh, other than that, we do have a single column piers. So this is mainly due to the. Uh, restriction uh, due to the clear uh, we, we had a clear head and clear uh, horizontally clear distance for our railway lines or a uh, river pass uh, majorly in the uh, for railway lines we had a uh, restriction uh, restriction so that we cannot go for a two column piers our regular type so that we had to go for a single column and uh, uh, you see that there's a large, high, high level of cantilever. And uh, sometimes these, uh, now these piers has to be uh, supported by two, two different spans, either uh, 35 to 20 uh, or, uh, or 30 to 25, so that uh, there is a large unbalanced moments are also there. So those have to be accounted and uh, all these have been accounted and uh, in our designs and construction has been carried out accordingly. Uh, and uh, bridge articulation, when it comes to our bridge articulation, we have provided some, in some, some peer locations, we have put, provided doubles uh, uh, and uh, some, some, some peers, uh, there's no doubles, uh, only elastomeric bearing. So uh, the bridge articulation was decided for the optimum, uh, optimum use of the substructure. Uh, uh, and uh, allowing the uh, superstructure uh, 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 eigenstresses are lower. I mean, uh, you, as we all know that uh, which superstructure we allow to move, otherwise if we restrain the movements, uh, large bending moments and uh, forces are transferred to the substructure. Uh, to avoid that one, we provide uh, uh, our articulation such that uh, optimizing the this movement, allowing this movement and optimizing the transferring of loads to the substructure, especially horizontal uh, loads. And uh, another challenging work uh, of our construction was to construct the uh, these uh, peer peer cappings, uh, especially in uh, river uh, in the rivers. If you see that these are low, very high, very high, uh, our uh, peer cappings are located in very high levels, so that uh, false work, putting false work to uh, rest this form, uh, form work is not possible from the bottom because of the river and during the high level, all these will be uh, not effective. So that uh, our contractors uh, come with some innovative ideas. So uh, what they have proposed uh, was to put a collar, uh, collar around the uh, around the uh, pier. If you see, can if you see these pictures, my cursor. Uh, 
this uh, color is fixed to these uh, columns and on the on those color colors you rest the two beams and put the platform for the concrete so that was their proposal so once these proposals are coming uh, we are not uh, rejecting at at once what we have done ask them to perform a testing uh, uh, whether this this kind of uh, loads can be rested with the friction uh, so what they what they have done is uh, they have uh, uh, done a, a load test uh, and we uh, observed all the deflections and all these uh, uh, with the basic calculations and all those stuff, uh, we identified that there is no harm with this proposal. So we allowed them to go ahead. And by that, those kind of decisions and those kind of proposal was helpful us to expedite the construction work of this project. And uh, I have to appreciate our contractors to come with these new uh, uh, innovative ideas and taking a certain risk and uh, proving that uh, uh, ultimately uh, for the successful of the project. Uh, our project uh, uh, foundation systems of the, our project, uh, mainly by the uh, either spread footing or a pile, pile uh, on piles. So we do have a, uh, uh, mainly 1,800 diameter piles. Other than that, we did have uh, 1,200 and 1,500 millimeter diameter piles. So we did use uh, percussion method as well as drilling methods to construct our piles. The drilling was the ma major, uh, uh, most of the piles were completed with the drilling, drilling, but some certain, some contractors use uh, a percussion method as well uh, uh, in their pile construction. So uh, when it comes to uh, girder launching, uh, uh, we did have uh, 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 different ways of uh, girder launchers, uh, launching methods for girder, launching the girders. Uh, so you can see that this is a girder launcher. Uh, and uh, we, uh, one way of uh, putting the girder on the uh, substructure was using girder launchers. And the other one was we did use a gantry cranes as well. So uh, from the picture, you can see that uh, uh, girder is transferring to the near to the gantry crane and gantry crane is lifting the girders and uh, placing the uh, girders on top of the uh, substructure. Uh, then, the, then we also use the crane methods as well. Uh, this is a very familiar method for any, any of the road sector. And so we did use the same method here also. So our girder, girders were weighed around uh, 1010, 35 meter long girder was uh, around 1010 uh, tons. So uh, we use uh, sometimes girders for launching as well. So uh, uh, now you know that uh, in, a, in concrete construction, the temperature control is uh, very important. And uh, we did uh, very stringent temperature control methods. So all the construction uh, work, uh, concrete work uh, was supervised for the certain temperature controller works. And uh, before that, we have com completed the mock-up test using the, uh, the uh, temperature monitoring. And uh, uh, for our cement also, we use 30% of fly ash to reduce the uh, uh, height, uh, he he heat of hydrations and uh, gain the strength as well. So we use the gate 30, gate 40, gate 50 concrete in our construction. Uh, uh, so our thermal control plan, uh, uh, so we use pre cool aggregates and we use did use cooling pipes uh, to uh, maintain the concrete temperature also. So this has uh, 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 given us the benefit that uh, if you know that the history of our express space, they have a problem uh, kind of related transit formation EF issues in previous uh, construction. But in this our this construction work, we did uh, had a minimal uh, minimum amount of problems with the uh, temperature issues. 
uh, which we uh, manage within our control. Uh, this is another illustration of uh, putting cooling pipes uh, for the control of temperature. And uh, uh, as I said, uh, we did a, a, a mock-up test, and uh, in, even with the finite element uh, element model, models were also created using heat of hydration analysis method uh, to uh, see that whether these uh, temperatures are within the controllable limits. When it comes to deck concreting, uh, we used uh, uh, certain uh, hanging methods to uh, put the uh, underneath the uh, formwork system uh, and do the construction. These are uh, all, uh, almost all, all these proposals are come from the contractor, contractor side. Some are innovative ideas. So we, with the uh, uh, with necessary checking, we have approved all this stuff. And uh, I think uh, this project, uh, local contractors used uh, the concreting uh, uh, pavers. Uh, I think uh, earlier, I think this is the first time they have most of the contractors use concrete deck pavers for their construction work. So that is also a new experience for them. And uh, when it comes to QA, QC work of uh, the work, uh, we, 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 what we have done, we always do the, do the design properly. And what, however, we check it with the actual conditions. So when it comes to the girder checking, uh, you see now if we are de design our girders for the composite section. So, I mean, uh, the girder has to be considered as a composite section once the uh, all the decks have been casted. After the deck has been completed, uh, the, we consider that uh, girder is, has the full strength because of the composite actions. But uh, now we had a problem of checking the girder before the uh, constructing of the uh, steps. So uh, uh, in that case, we have to back calculations our calculation and see how uh, how this uh, be, can be tested. So uh, I think we uh, we come with uh, some novel methods that mean uh, calculate back calculating the stresses at the beam uh, during the service stages, stages, and we loaded the beam. Uh, to again, that's check whether that this permissible level stresses can be withstand uh, during the test. So these kind of uh, methods were a little bit of uh, I think I would say innovative uh, because uh, uh, this two point loan, especially earlier we have some experience in uh, using uh, single point loading testing. But th that doesn't simulate the actual beam uh, loading pattern we do in the bridges. So we do went to two point loading testing. And uh, I think uh, by that, these uh, methods, we achieve our targets. And this is another illustration of uh, GERD testing. Uh, and uh, we have used the strain monitoring and the deflection monitoring for. Uh, uh, evaluate our uh, girder testing results. And uh, as, as any other similar uh, other project, we do have the QA, QC work for our pile testing. We had a cross soil only test for uh, uh, testing of the quality of our pile. And we carried out the uh, load testing uh, for our piles also, both static and dynamic testing. I think these are much familiar to uh, all civil engineers. Uh, we carried out static load test using the, uh, the weights, permanent weights, and uh, we do have the pile dy dynamic analysis uh, for our checking of our files. Now, uh, in our certain big areas, we did not have the accessibility to carry the large loads. Uh, so these are very sloppy grounds. Uh, some some grounds are very sloppy, so that uh, resting of these high large cantilages are not uh, possible. In that cases, we adapted the new innovative methods uh, to uh, check our pile capacities. What we have done, we installed the uh, uh, priestess anchorage systems in the ground, and. Uh, 
uh, this is the if you see the right hand side photo you see the pre, uh, pre stress uh, anchorage system is connected to the cantilage then cantilage is jacked so that uh, all these pre stressing uh, anchorages take the load and provide the necessary uh, load uh, to test the pile this is another illustration of uh, the same method what we have adapted we are uh, large uh, load cannot be uh, accommodated due to the very weak grounds. Uh, now, this is a, a, a illustration of processing strand, strands, uh, and uh, uh, someone has unmuted his mic. Not here. Excuse me, your honor. Yeah, engineer Taylor. Ah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I have muted my mics. I'm sorry on that one. Uh, I will go to previous slide. I hope that I have missed that one. So this is a lateral load pile testing, uh, which is required for, uh, because most of the piles are governed by the lateral loads, uh, loads. And we have done the testing for lateral loads as well. And uh, the next slide is about the concreting, uh, checking the concreting uh, so when some issues were arises due to the uh, quality of the concreting. We we adopted methodologies uh, collaborating with local universities. Now this is an, another benefit of this project is we collaborated with the, all the local universities so that our all the professional uh, engagement is there. Uh, so I think that is another uh, another achievement we have done is uh, the all the our we uh, we had a high level of collaboration with our universities so, uh, and very uh, expert knowledge on the certain issues. So this is a, one of the illustration of uh, uh, checking of a concrete quality with ultrasonic pulse velocity tests. Then uh, uh, now. Most of the highways, in uh, I mean the global wise, also so issues. There are some issues with the bearing, uh, bearing pads. So with the time, with the during the service, this bearing get 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 displaced, so that this has to be uh, uh, realigned or uh, uh, bearing has to be replaced. So this is one issue in uh, in in the bridges where bearing pads are used. So during this construction, uh, certain uh, bridge locations we identify that uh, uh, bearing has been displaced due to uh, uh, during the girder, girder launching. So that we have to uh, uh, realign those uh, bearing pads. So our all the bear superstructures are being designed so that uh, this superstructure can be jacked and lifted, uh, and bearing can be replaced. So all the calculation we have done that one, and accordingly we have done that one at the site as well. So you see that we have jacked uh, uh, the superstructure. You see, uh, now there's a cross in, in, in diaphragm at the superstructure. So we have provided the jacks and lifted the whole superstructure, and we have uh, 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 provided the proper placement of the bearing uh, for the correction. So uh, in near future also, uh, uh, I mean, 
around 20 25 years uh, with the time this bearing get displaced this, this can't be uh, uh, unavoidable i mean i mean with the, around 50, 25 50 years this will happen so that this has to be realigned again in that case uh, uh, our local industry has the expertise to carry out such a work and uh, i think uh, 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 our contractors can confidently undertake these kind of works so uh, with that uh, with that uh, i think uh, 115 uh, minutes have been passed uh, I will quickly go through the health and uh, safety measures, OSHA's issues we have adopted at the site uh, 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 with, the, with the remaining five to 10 minutes. So these are the uh, joint site inspection we had with the client, engineer, and the contractors. You can see that a uh, uh, lot of involvements are there ours, in our safety department. And uh, we had a uh, safety programs, conducted training programs, and evaluating our existing controls. Uh, so, large number of labors were educated. Uh, uh, the safety measures we have to undertake. Uh, then uh, we had uh, uh, factory inspection. In inspection engineers are there, so they inspected all the. Uh, were, workshops in uh, our project uh, and even the contractors themselves had a, a great concern for the safety and you can see that uh, top managements of the contractors put in their effort on safety meetings and the, all the laborers were educated on the safety issues uh, and safety trainings has been carried out uh, and even the local police officers of uh, uh, given the opportunity to uh, uh, address the drivers and uh, uh, put some safety concerns on their driving. And uh, uh, we had a, initially we had a issues with our, uh, because a lo lot of material has been transported in the local roads, where a lot of complaints were popping up, but still we manage our project management units have been able to uh, address all these issues with the proper education to our employees and uh, uh, with the necessary sign boards. And uh, uh, we do interact with the school children around the area so, so, so that uh, they are aware of what is happening around them. And uh, that's how we maintain our social responsible on the, uh, for the project. And we do have the safety awareness programs for the public, and we do have the public, uh, grievances programs. Uh, when, whenever there are public grievances are popping up, we do have the channel to address all those issues uh, to the uh, satisfactory level. And we we did uh, provide the safety and uh, training uh, supporting systems uh, in the site levels so that uh, our OSHAs are maintained in a standard way, uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in acceptable levels. And uh, we did have the load test for gantry uh, cranes and so that uh, we ensure the, the safety of the gantry cranes and when there's a blasting, a lot of blasting was happening in, uh, during this project, so necessary precautions were taken. And uh, we did have a local roadways to maintain during the initial stages. A lot of complaints were popping up, but still we do manage to uh, address all these issues with the necessary dedication and uh, necessary uh, uh, work. Uh, and a lot of large number of labors were involved in this project so that we need to provide our say uh, necessary health precautions to pro provide any any epidemic uh, season and i have to elaborate that during the covid season also we did our service but we did provide our service to the nation and with proper uh, adaptation of uh, health regulation so that, that is how we did complete our work uh, in the 2022, I mean, end of 21. And uh, I mean, uh, with that dedication, I have to appreciate all our uh, colleagues, I mean, from labor to project director, 
uh, to accomplish this target in this level. Uh, and uh, we did have a safety barriers and safety arrangement like this. Uh, uh, we, did, we did have a lot of railway crossings so that we have to maintain separate gates and lab labors to handle all those stuff. Uh, and we did have a safety barriers. We have a very deep, deep cutting uh, and we work in a very high level and very deep level so that we need to have a safety barriers. Uh, and this is another example of we are working in very high elevations uh, so that we have to provide necessary safety nets. So it's another illustration of we, how we provide the uh, safety arrangements in uh, when we are working in the high elevations. Uh, so this is uh, this is the how we address. Uh, you, you, if you if you see that uh, the difference between uh, local and uh, foreign contractors, the foreign contractors put much effort on the OSHAs, uh, where our contractors uh, paying less uh, uh, you know, less attention to those. But in this project, uh, with the help of RDA and the consultant, the contractors. Uh, uh, give their best shot in their OSHAs and uh, I think that's a, a remarkable thing in this project and th that this practice has to be continued by our local contractors uh, and I think with this all these measures uh, they can compete in the international level uh, uh, in, in near future. With that I conclude my uh, major presentation. Uh, I think uh, in the chat box, there are so many uh, 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 questions are popping up. Uh, uh, Mrs. Kamala, shall I uh, go to one by one? How would it be possible? Yeah, actually, yeah, really. I have to put a word before you go to the questions. It's a, it's a really, really interesting and it was very effective, I think. Uh, uh, it's a comprehensive thing you have done from from the inception up to now, up to the move in traffic. So I think uh, I don't think we can answer everything. But uh, there was one question asking about the costs of design and this thing. I replied him directly. Uh, I asked him to give me the telephone number so I can direct it to you, and you can find the cost. But this is relating the construction and your design aspects. There are some questions. Uh, yeah, you can take it over. So, it's yeah. so uh, one, one question was uh, yeah. BS 540 has been superseded by quite a while now. Why wasn't Eurocode used as the basis for the design? Now, you see, uh, now uh, our construction started in 2017, and all these tender documents were prepared before that. So uh, right now, uh, I think uh, at that time, the national annexes for the Euro codes were not provided uh, so that uh, you can't use the Euro code uh, without national annexes. Uh, so that I think RDA in this project specification, it has uh, mentioned that VS5400 has, has to be adapted. Uh, now, uh, do you, now recently uh, national annexes were uh, I mean prepared, been prepared. Uh, so in near future, I think uh, it is uh, we can uh, adapt Euro codes in our future projects. Uh, but right now, uh, uh, this project was completed with the BS5400 loading. And uh, you see now, we as, as I elaborated in my presentation, uh, we used the BS5400 2006 version. So 2006 version uh, uh, has a very high level of uh, HA loading, high, lo HA high loading intensities. And uh, if you see uh, the Eurocode uh, guidelines, uh, UK, UK National Annex, uh, they have prepared their UK National Annex for Eurocode to harmonize with the BS5400 2006. So that uh, uh, there is no big difference uh, when it comes to the uh, BS5400 2006 and Eurocode. Nevertheless, there are different load models are there. If you see uh, there are 5400 have HA and HP, uh, in Eurocode, it's a different LM load model one, load model two. But the, if you see the effects, ultimate effects, uh, 
2006 and uh, Eurocodes harmonize uh, so that I don't think there, there is a big issue on uh, issue with the these codes. Uh, uh, code of practices. Uh, so next question is what is the percentage of cost for detail designs in context and uh, right now I can't exactly memorize all this uh, thing. Uh, it should be around less than uh, five percent. Uh, I think it should be around three to four percent uh, thing. Uh, but I can be uh, dead sure on that one. I have to check and uh, verify this one. Yeah, thank you, engineer. I yourself, I told the same answer for him. So we will do it. Yeah. Uh, so the next question was. Could you explain how the top portion tendon which achieve the other country where are anchored, where are these additional anchorage blocks at the web plant in intersection? Also, with the link slab, the girders of each pan would have been designed as essence simply supported. Why was the chosen now a multi-span continuous arrangement? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so I will go to that, that slide, uh, which I explained the other continuation. So this is a slide. Uh, so uh, uh, this is the this is the first first girder, and this is the second girder. Now you have to imagine this is as a placed on the piers, uh, top of the piers, and once these piers have been transferred. Uh, the these girders have a uh, tendons tendon tendon ducts have been provided during the construction for the top post post tensioning and uh, what we have done uh, once these girders were placed uh, uh, we did uh, put the tendons and uh, we did carry out the uh, top ten top top post tension and we have, I have a photo of that one as uh, my slides. Uh, then other arrangement post link slab. So essentially, link slab was and as as he she uh, the engineer so that collect she mentioned these slabs have been uh, designed as supported girders uh, to achieve this uh, this kind of rotation. Uh, we do have to debonding the debonded the uh, link slab with the girder uh, so that we did provide the debonding uh, uh, if we are not debonded what will happen that this link slab will uh, drag a large hogging moment negative moment which you can't design this uh, link slab this is around 200 millimeter thick slab uh, which you can't design this to uh, the link slab for this negative moment uh, with 200 millimeter thickness. So to prevent that one, we have to debond uh, debond the uh, link slab with the deck, uh, and this uh, length of debonding is also comes from the designs. Uh, uh, it comes with design calculation, and uh, uh, that how we uh, attain the continuity. So. Uh, what 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 uh, what her next question was why you can't do a continuous arrangement uh, in that case uh, we we have to uh, uh, we have to uh, what we have uh, these contractors have uh, bid for the uh, preliminary designs so these preliminary designs have the certain girders and uh, this has 35 uh, 30, millim 30 meters to 35 meter long spans. So once uh, if you adapted this kind of uh, this kind of uh, continuous girders for in the construction during the construction, uh, it's, it's some costing. Uh, if it is a costing, uh, uh, has to be uh, evaluated. And I have to say that uh, 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 now in this project. The construction work and the design work started simultaneously at once. So there is in no any room to even to breathe. <laughs> uh, that's what happened. So I mean, uh, we do not have uh, any 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 value engineering solution. To, uh, we did uh, adapted certain value engineering proposals, 
but uh, there is no any greater rooms to uh, deviations from the original proposals so that uh, we adapted the same the continuation of the preliminary drawings uh, given and uh, i think we this is another lesson we learned in this uh, project uh, to get the most economic design i think uh, in the preliminary stages we have to put a lot of concerns uh, and uh, a uh, lot of past experience in our express ways so that we can obtain the most economical designs uh, for our future works uh, very good and very much yeah thank you very much for your appreciation uh, dr tisali and again and thank you very much for your participation as well uh, engineer nalana please explain some technical lesson when we construct curve section with girders so as i said uh, uh, now i have explained uh, curve section of the girders now you see see uh, in the medium interchange or oh, 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 this is this is a construct on abutment but if you see uh, this potuhar interchange uh, we do have a greater curves uh, and uh, in in the medium interchange also we do have a very greater curves uh, to construct on piers so what we have done is we have uh, to get this greater greater curves we have to adapt uh, adapt uh, smaller spans so we have uh, used even 15 meter long spans to get uh, 20 meters long spans to get these curves that's how we uh, uh, obtain these curves and we have to place our girders in a certain way that uh, uh, i mean in a skew way skew manner uh, to obtain this uh, curves so once this uh, uh, skews is greater than 20 degrees uh, we have to adapt in certain uh, we have to analyze the girders in uh, uh, this skew because the uh, traffic is totally different from the right angle bridge uh, Uh, and we have to accommodate all the uh, stresses Or otherwise it will uh, have problems in the bearings bearing will be displaced or the top uh, top slab will be cracked in during the service uh, i think uh, all these details can be uh, explained in later in a, in in future design uh, design uh, Uh, seminars i think this is uh, in this uh, seminar i would uh, uh, i would avoid such a thing going into very much detailing of the this detailing process uh, uh, but i think i have generally explained this stuff mm. uh, very good overall project thank you and thank you uh, sirajan ms sirajan uh, can you please upload the recording to us thank you and uh, i think uh, isl is uh, doing such a process if you check the isl website uh, they do have the recordings of this uh, most of the, our uh presentations is it possible to get the soft copy of the presentation yes we will uh, we will discuss with the uh, sectional committee and see how we can uh, accommodate that one as well what is the applied load on the load test as i said uh, mr engineer sadik uh, the applied load test load was calculated by the back calculation uh, it is different from uh, girder to girder because we did have a different girders uh, 15 meters 20 25 30 35 uh, so all these girders were uh, uh, calculated to obtain the uh, service stresses which uh, at the original design uh, the, this girder was anticipated so that's how this uh, load was calculated uh, and uh, uh, i think it's uh, uh, different from and we we did use a two point load system uh based on that we uh, did the loading
uh, yeah, can during eight fifteen. Yeah, I think my 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 mic was muted, and I'm sorry, sorry on that one. Uh, dear madam, sir, in a section I has given YouTube share it is talking in Spain your knowledge in different areas. Engineer Manjula Samarit Singh, thank you very much for your message. And as Mr. Manjula Samarit Singh has, uh, Engineer Manjula Samarit Singh has shared that this YouTube channel is uh, giving us the all the presentation we uh, section committee has done up to date. To date. Any special concern given during the design stage concerning the probable area of occurring earthquake and landslide? Uh, as I said earlier, the seismic loading. Uh, now uh, uh, we we do our designs as per the specification. Uh, so our specification includes RDA bridge design manual and the uh, BS five four double zero guidelines. So uh, RDA bridge. The design manual 90, 1997 version uh, does not specify for earthquake loading, seismic loading, uh, so that uh, uh, seismic uh, loading were not incorporated in the designs. But however, uh, all the other dynamic forces were incorporated to our designs. Uh, and uh, this is another area which, uh, which uh, our uh, employer RDA has to uh, undertake whether or not. Uh, if you see the cost will be skyrocketing if we adapted uh, earthquake uh, loadings into our designs, uh, it will provide a very large sections. Uh, however, uh, we can go for a certain kind of detailing, uh, but uh, this is another question we do have to uh, uh, revisit uh, because uh, you you know that uh, certain number of earthquakes has happening, uh, small earthquakes have happened, but still, if you adapt the uh, full earthquake loading, I would say the reinforcement and the sections would be very large, and uh, it, it will it will with a, with a very high cost. We have to undertake uh, those designs. Thank you for great interest. Thank you, Engineer Madara, Mr. Amar, Engineer Amar Singh. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Engineer Dawan, sir. Yeah, very good. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Why can't we go for higher spans via viaducts such as 40 or 50 minutes box girder section? It is cost effective to go for box girder. Yes, it is cost effective, uh, but the problem here is the uh, uh, girder transporting. Uh, the the most economical use of girder transporting because we do have a girder casting yard at. Uh, uh, our construction methodology was to provide uh, girder casting yards and then transporting these girders to the, the girder uh, viaducts positions. So uh, the maximum would say around 30, 35 meters uh, is possible for transporting. The, the more length would be it's very difficult to transport uh, during the service road. But uh, however, uh, if you see now uh, balance cantilever, there are certain ways of doing this one incremental launching and balance cantilever methods are there. But uh, as I said, uh, our, our uh, in this project, we adapted girder casting yard. We had a, in one location, we had a girder casting and once the girder is cast, transported. So that's for the methodology we adapted so that uh, our spans were limited to uh, 35, maximum 35. Have you cost checked the minimum permanent form of in traditional form of on bridge decking? Yes, we did, and uh, uh, so uh, uh, as you know that uh, our uh, initial designs were uh, without any permanent form work, but the con this particular contractor uh, contractor uh, had a proposal to do a permanent form work. So, uh, so we had a very comprehensive uh, cost benefit analysis. Uh, and uh, with no any additional cost to the employer, 
uh, we agreed with the proposal. Great presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Excellent presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, this is expressed by was totally done by the Sri Lankan contractors. What are the pros and cons of doing project by them rather than foreign contractors to China? So uh, majorly, it's uh, the experience we uh, we our contractors gain to this uh, project is immense. And they were, as I uh, explained earlier, they had uh, uh, exposed to the very large uh, large uh, amount of new construction work and uh, construction planning, uh, I would say. And uh, with that, our local industry had a uh, great exposure. And now they can compete for the international level. So earlier, the our contractors were in a foreign contra contract, uh, under foreign contract uh, as a subcontractors. Uh, with this one, with this uh, project, now they have their first hand experience with the project. Now they can compete for the international level, especially in uh, like nearby countries to Sri Lanka. Then they can further progress uh, with that one once they perform well. So that is the biggest uh, advantage uh, they have attained uh, with this, uh, this kind of approach. Uh, what is the per kilometer cost for the entire Kunar Expert is different, less than Chinese project cost. Uh, now, this is a very debatable uh, thing. Uh, since I'm not the uh, uh, cost uh, expert on for this project, I would uh, not, uh, uh, my comments are not much very accurate on that one. Uh, uh, however, and let's say it's a four billion for the uh, sections uh, with uh, viaducts, and two billion for the uh, embankment section, which is a rough, rough estimation. Uh, uh, and uh, we can provide more details in our next presentations. Thank you. Thank you very much, Shanghai. Thank you. Also, there are any possible provision for future widening and what are the treatment done for the seas and prior to use? Okay, so yeah, there is a provision for future widening in this project. For there are uh, two additional uh, lanes for a future widening from the uh, one side. I mean, in the one side, there's a one, another one lane to be provision for one lane, one lane. Uh, those provision has been provided for a future widening. And what was the treatment done for the sea sand prior to use? So all the checks has been done and uh, we have allowed the sea sand to be washed uh, and see the chloride levels and uh, accepted for the, uh, all the testing has been carried out for their chloride content and uh, the levels. Uh, so that after that, we allowed the sea sand for our and regular testing has been carried out. Great success suggest to explain to the team for general public. Thank you. Thank you. Then structure stop horizontal movement. Is there any structure to stop horizontal movement of the girder? Yes, there is. Uh, we at some location we put the doubles in the girders, and we we and some location we provide the uh, stoppers uh, in the uh, uh, reinforced concrete stoppers in the peer, peer structures. By doing this local and most of money dimension has a big advantage. Uh, yes, Indian Animal Padne, very senior uh, uh, engineer is such, saying that by doing this local contractors, most of the money dimension in Sri Lanka, it is a big advantage. That is, a, yes, I certainly agree with Mr. Indian Animal. Uh, that uh, local uh, uh, currency is remaining with Sri Lanka, and uh, uh, we get the big exposure as well. Uh, uh, thank you, India Moses. Uh, thank you, and thank you, Costa. And uh, uh, Mrs. Kamala, I think I have answered the, all the questions uh, written in the chat box. Uh, uh, 
yeah. So, uh, so shall we wind up with the? Yes, I would say that, uh, and I have to thank you all, all the participants of this uh, semi, uh, this presentation. Some of I them know very personally, and thank you very much for coming to listen to me. Uh, and thank you very much for your time and patience with this presentation. Thank you very much. I hope you gained something on this one. Thank you very much, and have a pleasant evening. Thank you. Thank you very much, Engineer Yasela. Uh, this is not, uh, I before before I pass it to over to our engineer Trimavitan for your official word of thanks because you all were big thank from all the gathering and from everybody. So before that, I will I have one announcement. I mean one one request. I can say you can have uh, there are I think now also 150 about people participants here. So anybody can volunteer. To write a, an article for our slain no who we can do whatever things but we thought of we start with from this presentation onward for the this is uh, especially for the expresses so we request any volunteer can come up we all can assist even your sailor engineer sailor can assist anybody so i just wanted to propose that with that, as Injil Manjul has given in the chat box, uh, you can use, you can refer to this Civil Engineering Sexual Committee. Uh, has ISL has created a YouTube, so all the important activities has been shared there because some, some of our participants have direct questions to me. So you can use, after subscribing, you can have, you, Enter into that, and you can uh, expand your knowledge. Uh, see, Indian Manjul also has mentioned the same. Yeah, Indian Manjula. Thank you. And I will call Engineer Chimavitan. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, my Engineer Mrs. Kamala. Uh, I'm Trimaitana, so I am using this uh, time slot uh, to um, give our uh, thanks to uh, Yasela, especially. This is actually a very uh, impressive and uh, very knowledgeable presentation, uh, Central Express Air Project 2. Uh, Engineer Asela actually uh, explained uh, a lot and a very um, uh, orderly manner. So I would say it's very structured. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, it's actually we got a very uh, high knowledge on uh, the Express Air. Actually, we didn't know most of the things that uh, uh, was happened inside thank you uh, engineer sailor thank you very much for your uh, uh, i mean the uh, preparation and the, the presentation and uh, i can remember that uh, we were work uh, together in the airport uh, project long time yes. back so yes. <laughs> <laughs> thank you there. Uh, so then it's uh, happy i'm really happy and I, i'm really proud of you as well as the uh, uh, we are proud of uh, that uh, local contractors who um, the, did this project uh, successfully and uh, so i um, I would like to thank um, um, uh, the organizing subcommittee and also also the knowledge sharing subcommittee in organizing this event successfully, and also uh, ISL uh, by hosting this event, and uh, finally the all of uh, our participants who participated and uh, I mean the waiting till the end of the presentation and also the QA session uh, without uh, I mean the, the getting disturbed and this is night. So thank you very much, and also I uh, invite the uh, sailor, uh, engineer sailor, to I mean the uh, continue this I mean the knowledge sharing. I mean the, not only here with us, but also in some other forums also. It's very impressive, very I mean the knowledgeable presentation. Please share some. Um, uh, we, uh, please do this pres same presentation with uh, in other forums as well. Thank you, engineer sailor. Thank you very much. Thank you everybody. So have a good night. Uh, thank you. Thank, thank you, you thank you very much engineer trima i really night. appreciate it. thank yes. you very much and thank you very much for the civil engineer section committee and i have to pass special thanks to engineer kamala engineer mrs kamala for coordinating this event and providing me the opportunity to present this beautiful work and i have to thank uh, civil engineer sectional committee and the iesl uh, for giving us the opportunity to provide our voice not only for me uh, I, i'm representing the whole a uh, uh, lot of team behind me 
and all the hard workers of this uh, project. And thank you very much for your their great dedication and service to this country. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good night.